I can't remember actually a, a single person. I can just hear, I have memories of when I was a child and I, I used to hear people weaving, so I knew what it sounded like. Uh, I knew what flax smelt like before I even touched it. Uh, knew how to cut it before I knew how to weave it. Uh, I knew what it tastes like, so all of those things were before I started even learning. Yeah, it wasn't until about 11, 12. Um, I asked my queer if I could learn, sit down and learn. I, I think she was a bit reluctant at the, in the beginning, but she, she gave in. And these type of baskets now is one of the first things I learned. Was the kite, kite kumara and kite pipi. Nothing flash, no, nothing was in our house, nothing was done for show. Because I come on my father's side, I come from a line of carvers. Ngati Whakaue, Ngati Pukaki carvers. And my uncle was the last to, to carry on. Um, but he died before he could teach the next person. So it was decided by the family that I would go to the carving school and learn to carry on the, the um, what would you call it? the art within our family. I learn heaps there. Pretty much everything I do now is um, influenced from there. Oh, that's where I seen art was serious, how serious art could be. Otherwise, when it was at home, it was only for people we knew, family near was going to the beach, they needed baskets for pippies or something, so it was only living stuff, daily stuff. And then when I went to Te Puya, ah, opened up to a whole other world of how um, how important this is to our culture. You're really lucky to be able to go to that place because you're surrounded by it 24-7, really. Uh, the arts, um, heavily influenced by James Rickard. Um, he was my main tutor, Clive Fugel, um, all of those type of people. They they taught me how to think, how important you are in um, retaining kōrero for iwi, hapu and whānau. How serious that role of being the, the, you could say you've got the pen and you're writing the history on a piece of wood. I learned how important that was. I used to carve during the week. And then after rugby on Saturday, the next day if I wasn't too hungover, I'd go go sit with the nannies in the weaving school. And at that time when I was training, all the nannies were, um, so they had a name for their club, their weaving club on the weekend was uh, Nil by Crutch. And they were all um, pauwaru, they were all widows. And I was the only male in it that used to go down there and weave with them. This would be crack up. My research is based around awakening a sleeping hat culture. I've read a few articles saying that it's um, lost forever, and I just don't agree with that at all. That's a, a, in saying that research, there's not much um, documentation, so a lot of it is called it tukuiho, a waha, a iwi, a hapu. I think for the, my goal for the research is just to um, educate and sort of revive it, I guess. Like, it's too good to be just forgotten about. And, it, and it's something, if we want to reclaim our mana motuhake, I think this, this is a big part of it. Um, reo, kai Māori, uh, all, of, all of this stuff. Kākahu Māori, whakaro Māori, it goes hand in hand, I think. All of those tamoko, do you get me? I think it's real important for us.